and welcome to the show. It is March 16th, and let me go over some quick finance math over here. Um, let me start by saying that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Okay. So the way, um, the way money and businesses work is you got money flowing in and you got money flowing out, right? The money flowing out can be things like payroll, rent, interest payments, if you, if you have any debt, right? You know, uh, taxes, you might have to pay property tax, you might have to pay um, income tax, that kind of stuff, right, if you're making money. Um, in terms of money flowing in, uh, the, you know, it's the products and goods that you sell. If you sell services, if you license IP, the, you know, those are other sources of income. And for the case of oil, right, we, we, can, uh, we can further categorize these topics over here. For, well, let me start with the right-hand side. With, with money flowing out, we can categorize that into fixed costs and variable costs, right? In terms of uh, fixed costs, you got payroll, that's the number of people that you're employing, you know, the, 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 the regular paycheck they receive is a regular expense that you have, right? In terms of rig depreciation, um, that's the, the, the oil rigs that you have out there. They wear out over time, and you have a depreciation schedule, so you're allowed to depreciate that. Um, in terms of variable costs, uh, there's the amount of money it takes to extract oil out of the ground, and that's called COGS cost, or the cost of goods sold. Uh, for the cost of f the COGS cost for oil is about 30 bucks a barrel, is, is what we're saying over here. And in another variable cost is the percentage of profit that you'll have before taxes. So, if, so once you pay taxes, you'll have a percentage of that profit that you'll have to pay. And that's that's another variable cost, right? Now, in terms of income or or revenue, right? You'll you your revenue is you're selling a product, and that's the so your revenue will be the barrels of oil that you've sell, sold and the price per barrel, right? But oil is a commodity, and oil gets sold on the open market. So because oil is a commodity, you can sell all the oil you can produce. So really, it becomes an amount of oil that you can produce times the, times the dollars per barrel you get on the open market, right? That's what your revenue is for oil. So the question comes up, when is oil profitable? Well, it's when the left-hand side, or the money flowing in, is greater than the money flowing out, right? And so we make an equation out of that, right? So the revenue or on the left-hand side is the, is the barrels of oil that you're producing times the, the, the dollars per barrel that you get, right? And that has to be greater than what your costs are, be, being the fixed costs and the amount of money that you spend to pull that oil out of the, gr out of the ground. That's the COGS cost for oil times the number of barrels that you're actually producing. So we can do some quick algebra and move... Uh, move the COGS cost over to the left-hand side. And um, as a result, we can see that we have a common term over here, the barrels of oil being produced, right? So we can simplify our equation by just taking that common term out. And now it's just barrels per oil, you know, it's just the barrels of oil that you produce times the difference of the price of oil minus the COGS cost. And that, and that has to be greater than your fixed cost, right? That's when oil is profitable. So if we move the fixed cost over to the left-hand side, we see that um, everything we see that everything on the left-hand side has to be greater than zero. And when it's greater than, than zero, you're profitable. So on the left-hand side, you have the the term for how much profit you'll actually make, right? So uh, so so that's how you define profit now. The other interesting thing is you have a certain amount of cost that's on a per barrel cost now that you've done your, your algebra, and that's the price of oil minus the COG cost. So what happens when the price of oil increases? Well, you've got, uh, you've got a situation where your COGS cost and your fixed costs aren't increasing, they stay the same. All that increases is that uh, the, price of, the price per barrel, right? So when, as a result, people say that the price of, of, the price of oil has a direct relationship to the profit, right? It's, it's, a, it's a very direct relationship. And this is called accretive. So the term that people like to use is the word accretive because it directly impacts the bottom line, right? It directly adds to the bottom line. So anytime oil is above the co COGS cost, and as long as you keep your fixed cost low or near, near zero, oil is considered to be profitable, right? Now, if you look at this equation, and I'm leaving the equation up for, for a reason, right? The equation is limited by the amount of oil being produced 
and the and the price of oil, right? Those are the two most critical factors here, right? So now we know that torchlight in metamaterials has about 3.2 billion barrels of oil in the ground, just FYI. We also know that the price of oil is, is significantly higher than the COGS cost today. So just keep that in mind. So let's, so let's talk about that, that, that dividend that, that MMTLP uh, shareholders should get, right? That's, uh, and let's go back to some recent history. A lot of people were saying, oh, the dividend might be, you know, something like 46 cents a share. This is some recent FUD that came out, right? 45 cents, 35 cents, I don't know what. And they were using this material that, that you know, that was, um, you know, that came, out of meta, that came out of metamaterials that valued the assets held for sale, which is oil and gas assets, at $73.5 million. And they basically took $73.5 million divided by 165 million shares, and you said, hey, it's a 45 cent per share dividend. That's all you're going to get, Okay. So let's look at some recent history now. It turned out that George Palacaris, way back in time, he made a tweet. And he turned down an investment bank offer of $500 million, which was unsolicited, to buy all that oil and gas assets. Okay? And he said, no discount, no deal, no limit, <laughs> no can do. This was in June 21st. This was a while back. He turned down $500 million. What does that mean? Well... $500 million, if you divide that by 165 million shares, is about $3.03 a share. So he turned down an offer of $3.03 per share. You think he did that if, if, uh, if, the, if the oil was only worth about, you know, $0.45 cents a share or $0.35 cents a share? <laughs> I don't. So just keep that in mind. A lot of people forgot this, and they're, like, all freaked out. Or some people were new, and they didn't even know about it. So he already turned down the offer of $3.03 per share. When, uh, when people are saying, hey, maybe you're only going to get 45 cents a share or 35 cents a share. And that was way back around June, t June 21st, 2021, like I said earlier, right? Twitter is, is great. It has dates. And way back then, way back then, oil was somewhere in the range of $72, $72 a barrel. And where is it at now? I mean, the price of oil has fallen, but it's still around 70, it's, it's around 94 Dollars and seventy cents a barrel today, and it went as high as one hundred twenty-five. Okay, so he turned down an offer for three dollars and three cents when oil was at seventy-two dollars a barrel, and today oil is at ninety-five, almost ninety-five bucks a barrel. And now you're empowered because you know what the term accretive means. Accretive means it adds directly to the bottom line, and that dollars per share, I mean that dollars per barrel, adds directly into the bottom line of how much you'll be getting. So, as you know, I made a chart um, as to what you can expect for the dividend, way down around $30 per barrel. You can expect zero and all that. And um, so the charts made its way around. A lot of people saw it, but a lot of people don't, you know, have, you know, don't know where this chart came from. Well, this chart comes from a spreadsheet that I did, and there's a video about it. <laughs> Check out this video. Links will be provided, okay? There's a video that actually says how this chart is calculated. And... Uh, and it's, it goes into the, the details of the spreadsheet where, you know, what the price of oil is, what the COGS cost is. It's pretty good. I recommend you watch. If you're interested in how that chart came into being, I recommend you watch that video. I won't go into details because, you know, it's, it's a pretty long video. But um, if you look at the description of that video, you know, you, you'll see that there's a table of contents. So you can skip to the exact point in time that you want to look at. And... Um, it also has links in the video, so you can actually get, you know, references. Like, for instance, over here, the COGS cost of oil. Where did I get the COGS cost from? Well, it came from a Wall Street Journal article. There's a link to that. And if you click the link, you'll see that there's a barrel breakdown of, of, of how much it costs, you know, to extract oil in the U.S. in terms of cost of goods sold, right? In terms of shale and non-shale oil. And this comes from the Wall Street Journal. So there are links provided to... Links and references provided to all the information that's there, okay? And I even provide a nice spreadsheet. So if you look at the spreadsheet, it'll and click the link, it'll point you to a GitHub site. And on that GitHub site, uh, you'll see that there's two, um, two files there. There's a numbers file and an Excel file. They're both the same file, basically. It's just conversion from one format to another. And that has the entire dividend calculation spreadsheet in there. And... Um, 
You can download it by clicking on the code. If you've, if you've never used GitHub, you might be confused as to how to get, you know, how to get this information. What you do is you click the code and you, you uh, click open with, uh, you, and you can either clone it or you can download it. You can just get it directly from the link, you know. So uh, it, it, it's right there. Uh, and um, let's see. Oh, you can also get it as a, a zip file. So later on down there, uh, on there, you can download as a zip file. So I would just do the zip file option if I were you. So, uh, and finally, now that you have all this information as to how this calculation works and all that, where'd I get it from, right? Well, the calculation is, uh, has been tested uh, against a, another sale. So one of the things we like to do with, you know, whenever we, we have a calculation is to make sure it works, right? So you test it against independent data, independent sales. And in this case, it was back tested against the ConocoPhillips sale, which was a, a semi-recent sale at that time. And uh, I only back tested it once and it came out pretty good. I didn't need to do it, do any more back tests because I don't really believe too much in coincidences. Yeah, the calculation made sense to me and I said, hey, this thing came out pretty good, I'm convinced. But Roller Pigeons, uh, she back tested she back tested it this methodology against multiple sales uh, from different times, and they all came pretty close. Okay, so Roller Pigeons uh, deserves credit for this methodology, and um, personally, I would think that her method is brilliant, in no fewer words than brilliant. Brilliant is an acceptable way to describe this algorithm. The reason that it's brilliant is most people, when they talk about, gee, how much is this oil land, how much are you going to get for the oil land and all that, right? They talk about the amount of land and the price of the oil land, right? So they, they talk about the amount of land that you're going to get, like 50,000 acres, 100,000 acres, and how much dollars per acre, right? What's the price of the oil land? Well, this methodology removes that. It depends only on the price of oil and the estimated amount of oil in the land. So that's why I think this methodology is pretty cool. It, it actually works quite well because it removes extraneous factors that are just, you know, that can be disturbing or that can be, that are basically erroneous to the equation, right? It simplifies the equation quite done, quite well. So Roller Pigeon deserves credit for coming up with that. So with that, uh, now that you, you're empowered, you have the tools, you know how basic business works and all that, and I suggest you go wild. Download this, uh, you know, download the data from, you know, from GitHub. You, you know, you, you, you have access to the, uh, to the Excel spreadsheet. You can make any modifications you want. You can make any adjustments you want. Suppose you don't like the way that I'm, you know, that I, suppose you don't like the, pro, the, the, um, the COGS cost. Right now I put $30 for, per barrel in there. Suppose you think it should be higher. You can adjust that. You know, it's all there. Uh, so make any modifications and adjustments you want adjust the whole methodology if you want, you know, but, sh but, you know, if you do, I would recommend you share it with the community, you know, if you like, you know, you don't have to, but, um, you know, you know, my whole thing is uh, I'd, I'd like to empower you and give you the ability to make your own estimations. Okay. So you've seen what my estimations are and, um, go for it. <laughs> uh, with that, I'd like to say, um, this is not financial advice. So I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just here to empower you, and uh, this information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Goodbye.